What's up guys, meeting you with a brand new video. The rainy seasons arrived and the surroundings are lush and in full bloom. The second wave of Corona is rampant and I'm under curfew. I know many countries have affected so guys please stay safe and take healthy food and stick to health protocols. I'm Calvin Jaising and with my channel I talk about so many things because I do believe you do something right means you put technical knowledge into work. This even applies to cooking as food is what drives us. Please subscribe the channel if you find the content interesting that helps me a lot and would be pretty motivating. With rain starting to fall, I expect something special from Mother Earth, edible mushrooms. So after rains, as I walk around in the morning, I come across this delicacy, commonly known as small sand mushrooms or Heen Valihatu. Small because there are bigger versions as well. You can get an idea of the size comparing a mushroom with my hand. So these are termites soil related, the fungus growing linked to termite colonies. These mushrooms bloom in large numbers across the big area so whenever I see one I know there are lots around. Unlike man-grown mushrooms, these are superior in taste and probably in nutrition so I give a top priority to wild mushrooms whenever I stumble upon them. It's a rare delicacy you can enjoy once in a while so I don't mind spending so much time over picking and cleaning them. It requires a lot of patience and care yes but hey many plus points outnumber the effort and time sacrificed. So I'm going to cook this my way again I must stress that I don't use curry powder or chili powder as many Sri Lankans do. I use pressed chili and pepper. Most of the steps are self-explanatory. Wild mushrooms are very tasty when cooked using coconut oil rather than coconut milk. If you want milk, you may add very small amount, not lots. Add in the whole lot into a big bowl of water and then shaking gently helps big time. The heavy soil goes to the bottom. Mushroom roots get cleaned about 75% that way and the plant debris usually separate and begin to plot. Several washings this way needed. You need to be gentle with the mushrooms all the time as the cap can easily break and separate from a stalk and then the job can turn into a pretty messy nightmare. I preserve the stalk to its full length as much as possible just trying to wash away the dirt but when I feel like removing the root I just break it off. Begin this I make sure to be gentle because I want complete stalk uprooted. I don't want it to break leaving meat inside the soil. Keep in mind these are fruiting bodies of the fungus. They make this for a reason. I should respect nature's requirements so I don't pick the entire area. I leave some so the fungus can disperse its spores around. Its continuity is important. Usually these appear in soft and wet soil so easily pickable. Sometimes the stalk can break. The stalk is meat so you should try to unearth each mushroom to the best. Typically these come with lot of debris and soil. Since mushrooms are small and come in large numbers it can be seen as a mess and painstaking job to clean. But like I said before it's a rare nutritious delicacy so you can make up your mind to invest time and labor into it. Followed by several washes, you need to make sure to drain all the water in mushroom. You can either squeeze away the water with your hands or place on some sieve for this. This way you can minimize water getting into the curry.
these are so good i don't want to miss out even the little bit of mushroom again i'm not using fancy cooker here that make you sick clay are the best because your system wants that you eat a bit of clay as well did you know it i bet you didn't clay is on the other hand is inert it doesn't react with acids in food giving out unhealthy compounds in your food it doesn't burn nutrients lets you preserve all the good stuff in your food tiny pores in the pot adds a unique taste as well clay resists heat transfer so you can keep the cooked warm much longer that's why i highly recommend that you switch to clayware saying goodbye to fancy non-sticks and metalware i'm cooking outside because some house construction is going on currently it's a complete build building both the modern and the traditional kitchen as well don't know how long it will take because with curfew going on there are difficulties in transporting materials just mentioned in case you might be wondering why this guy cooking outside so much for that back to our cooking i'm cutting garlic fresh and ripe pepper onion and adding curry leaves to it here in sri lanka we have many different pepper or chili varieties i'm adding mid-range hotness with kochi and normal chili hotness going terrific with this dish i personally love eating hot food as it clears out blame issues you are free to go according to your taste there are many other things you can add from various spices flavoring agents like rampe or pandanus i'm just keeping it simple here i've grown some chinese chili varieties as well but they are not hot at all I'm going to add some homegrown cabbage leaves to the curry. Of course, cabbage is not a traditional single use vegetable, but adding it since its availability and the feeling that it might go great with mushrooms. Now I'm mincing cabbage leaves. I love their fleshy, fibrous nature when eating. First, you pour some coconut oil into the pot. I use NLDB coconut oil they sell at their outlets. People do not make their own cooking oils at home like they did in olden days now. They rely on various third parties which carry out adulterations. I buy from NLDB which looks all right, but the best these days is to make your own oil. When cooked with oil, you don't add everything first. You add oil, allow it to boil. When it starts boiling, you add salt and spicy hotness and flavoring agents. This is also known as tempering. This process liberates essential oils from cells and this enhances taste and flavor. this is done to an acceptable level the nose can read this you add your major ingredient in my case mushrooms once added you should mix everything very well again no metal spoons i'm using a wooden spoon for this
all the salt hot oil pepper should equally come in contact with and get absorbed to mushroom you should be checking the taste get few drops to your hand with a spoon and taste to see if you arrived at the correct level thorough mixing is essential here since we don't have coconut milk or something added let everything cook in oil with the pot covered for some time on and off open it up keep mixing and check the taste if you feel like everything is getting dried up and burning you may add a bit of oil as you cook the mushrooms get shrunk and the volume decreases if you didn't drain water you added during washing this water gets added to the curry making it taste watery this is why the proper draining is very important i make sure i use firewood during cooking because if you use liquid petroleum gas or lpg it gets into the curry through tiny holes in the clay pot needless to say eating such is very harmful even regarding firewood there is a local tradition not to use any firewood during cooking there are trees whose firewood should never be used for cooking some trees are toxic with varying health impacts using their firewood can add those toxins into what we cook you should never use chemical treated or painted timber or furlings etc as firewood these are little but very important things we don't give much attention to Most today even don't know how to identify edible mushrooms. Old knowledge has gone with the wind, which is disastrous. We should switch back to the sustainable old living systems and maintain our bodies properly. Our bodies' different systems are highly affected by our unacceptable lifestyle. Eating junk food being number one immunity suppressor. Good immunity definitely helps us fight epidemics like COVID-19. At this stage, if you want coconut milk, you can go ahead with first milk or mitikiri. Don't add too much because it will spread the taste in a large volume of liquid. You can enjoy the uniqueness if you add a small amount. Trust me on that. So the cooking mushrooms is done. We live in a world where good, nutritious and natural food is a rarity. My advice to you is never underestimate food sources like this this is why i say doing something right needs knowledge so hope you got all the messages i wanted to convey through the video next time when you see this make sure to cook and enjoy please like the video and subscribe the channel hit the bell button to get latest updates you may comment any of your concerns i would definitely respond Take care and good luck.